Saxon Advanced Mathematics. Whoo, that time I heard my phone turn off storage full. I had to delete some apps. Um, but anyway, I'm back to finish lesson 92. So we've got this group of boys and girls. The boys are identified here. There are seven of them. Two of them also happen to be redheads. And the point here is that being a boy and being a redhead are not mutually exclusive. It is possible to be both. So we need to calculate the probabilities here a little bit more carefully. The probability, and I'm gonna use those symbols that I used last time. The probability of, um, before I show you the formula, let me show you this. Um, the number of boys plus the number of redheads And then what we have to do is we have to subtract out the number of red-headed boys. There, that's the overlap. So let's take a look at the way the numbers work with that. The number of boys is seven, plus the number of redheads is four, but then we have to subtract out the number of red-headed boys, which is two. That tells us that the probability of being a boy or a redhead is nine out of this group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We did not double count the boys that are also redheaded. We had to subtract them out. And I just want to identify these. Here are the boys. That's this number. It's the whole circle. Here are the redheads. That's all of these. And then this little group here in the middle Here's my orange. These are the ones that we had to subtract out. And I wanna do this, these are the reds. Okay, so that's how we have to deal with numbers when we're finding probabilities of things where there's some overlap between the two groups. And we have a formula that I started to show you here. The probability of, with two groups, finding the probability of either of them, which is like the normal probability, equals the probability of the first one plus the probability of the second one minus the probability of the probability of either equals the probability of one plus the probability of the other minus the probability of both. Okay, that might not make a ton of sense, but the probability of being either a boy or a redhead is the probability of boys, the probability of redheads, minus the probability of both. Okay, and of course, to complete this, we would put it over how many are there in all? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it would be out of 13. All right, this is the formula we're going to carry forward to thrash through two examples. And then we're just going to look at a couple formulas real quick for the second part of the lesson. Ready? Example, 92.1. I just keep waiting for my phone to die. For my phone to be full. Yeah, it makes that little click noise, you know, when the video turns off. Okay, we've got a deck of cards. We wanna know what's the probability 
of a card being an ace or black. Okay, so we have to draw upon our knowledge of decks of cards. The probability of getting an ace is, let's see, there's four aces in the deck, right? So that's four out of 52. Let me remember, let me write our formula up here. The probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. This is the either, this is the or. Okay, so here's the probability of the first thing. Here's the probability of the second thing being black. Let's see, how many black cards are there? Half the deck is black, right? So that is 26 out of 52. And then we need to find the probability of a card being an ace and black, which, I'm sorry, did I write the wrong word there? and sorry okay ace and black um, well let's see there's the ace of clubs and the ace of spades so that is only two out of 52 so this is the probability of a for purposes of our formula this is the probability of B this is the probability of a and B. So now we're ready to go. It's 4 over 52 plus 26 over 52 minus 2 over 52. And that equals 28 over 52 and let's see, we can divide those both by four and we would get seven, no, yes, divide by four, seven out of 13. That is the probability of, we can write it like this. And we can remember this is the word connected with this shape, it's either an ace or a black. Okay, so this is the probability of drawing a card that is either an ace or is black out of a deck of cards. They're not mutually exclusive, right? That's the whole drama. Okay, and that's our formula. I'm gonna copy it one more time to do the last example in this section. probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability, whoops, I forgot the P, the probability of A and B. Second question, an urn contains four white balls and three black balls, the good old urn. Two of the white balls are rough and one of the black balls is rough. Okay. So we see there are, there are our non-mutually exclusive qualities. They have different colors and then they have different textures too, don't they? Okay, so what is the probability of drawing a ball that is either rough or white? So we're looking for the probability of either rough 
or white. So we'll, the way we'll do that is we'll find the probability of rough and we'll add the probability of white and then we'll subtract the probability of getting white and rough. Beautiful, we can do this. The probability of getting rough, there are a total of three rough, and there's a total of seven in all, right? So the probability of getting a rough is three out of seven. And the probability of getting a white is four out of seven. And then we have to subtract the number of white rough balls, and that is two out of seven. Three plus four is seven, minus two is five. So the probability of getting a ball that is either rough or white is five out of seven. And we can write that as P of R union White, I put them in the opposite order. No, that's how I did it, rough or white. Rough or white, this is our answer. Yay. Beautiful. Okay, probability of either. Done. Let's talk a little bit about permutations, the formulas for permutations and combinations. We've covered these before, but we're just gonna go through them quickly to make sure they get really muddled in the brain. Permutations and combinations. And we're talking specifically about formula notation. All right, let's just do a quickie review. Um, for permutations, it's remember we always talk about this in terms of n things taken r at a time. So let's just make up a quick example. We're taking seven things three at a time. So our chances would be seven times six times five, right? And so we could write that, it's seven times six times five, but to do it with factorial keys, it could be seven times six times five times four factorial over four factorial. These would cancel, right? So we can pull a formula from that. This is, seven is n, so the top is n factorial over, how do we get four? Well, it's n minus r, right? There is a formula that we can use for the permutation of n things taken r at a time. Again, I don't really like to use the formula. I much prefer to draw the box and look at the way it looks, but there's a formula that works really nicely too. Now, with combinations, it's slightly different. Let's remember how that formula looks. With combinations, what we've learned is that you take the number of permutations and you divide it by the number of items taken. Combinations, remember, are the situations when order doesn't matter, right? It's like choosing a team or something like that. And so when we do that, we divide it by the number taken factorial, yes, which is r. 
So what we do is we take the formula for permutations times n minus r factorial, and then we divide it again by r factorial. This joins the regular permutation formula right there. So this is the way we adjust it to make a combination of n things taken r at a time. So these formulas are very similar, which is why they're kind of confusing. But remember that we divide by the number taken to change permutations to combinations, and that gets us there. So these two formulas are worthy of putting in your notes and keeping close to your heart. Um, and they're tricky and subtle. There's just the one little difference. All right, so the per there's no, there's no, oh yeah, there is one. Oh, sorry, I almost lied to you. Almost skipped a problem for heaven's sakes, 92.3. Take the permutation, oh, I, we did it, never mind. This, what we did, that is example 92.3. Sorry, I was expecting a different problem. But using this example to develop this is what John wanted us to do. So we've done everything he asked of us. Oh gosh, don't you feel heavy? All right, now we're officially done with lesson 92. And look, oh, I haven't been crossing off this week. We're done with week 24. Um, if you are gonna be preparing with me for the uh, placement test, I lied to you. We're actually going to do, after um, spring break, we're going to do one more week of lessons because I want to be done through 100. Okay? I want you to finish through 100. That is a really great place to stop if you are trying to earn a credit. 100 lessons is solid. If you are studying with me but you are not going to be taking the placement test to go to community college, we will continue up through 120. But some students will be... Uh, breaking away to prepare for a different test. So we'll be stopping. So it is one more week. I'm sorry, I lied. I told you that after the midterm, we would be done. We will not take another test after this though. We'll just do a review problem at the end of this week and that will be it. So, sorry. My bad. Okay, lesson 92 is complete. Thank you, goodbye. <laughs>